a book about each of us. The way we lead our lives, the priorities we give to things, the manner in which sometimes against our will we are engulfed by the trivia around us. But above all, it's a love story. It's a love story which is also at one level a dialogue without undermining the passion which all love stories have but it's a dialogue between worldviews. It speaks to us directly from my point of view because it probably pushes us to make a balance sheet of our lives to understand what is loss and what is gain. I, you know, I went to these cities, Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore. I didn't know uh, 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 many of these people, my subjects, uh, so to speak. And I became, you know, I befriended them. They knew what I was doing. I was writing a book about young India. Uh, but, you know, I kind of uh, became part of their lives and I became uh, 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 an embedded journalist. So it's really an account from, from the inside. Um, 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 it's a very thick life kind of account where I'm blending in uh, to people's lives. And, and then getting their stories. The voice of the Veena traces the life and times of the indomitable genius of Carnatic music of the last century, the late Veena maestro Dr. S. Balachandra. He was a superstar of his time, someone who made unparalleled contributions uh, to the instrument of his choice, the Veena, developed his own style of playing on it, and also among the earliest musicians who took Carnatic music to the West. Alongside, it also gives the readers an insight into the musical establishment of Madras, the murky politics there, right from the 1920s onwards, and paints that picture of a socio-cultural milieu in which Balachandran operated. A good short story is supposed to capture uh, that particular moment in which something happens forever. A change of mood, a change of character, a change in a life, uh, something which becomes uh, irreplaceable sometimes. I did not imagine that I would write a book on my life this early in my career, but the way things transpired and the way fashion is uh, booming in the country now, since I was uh, one of the first people that uh, was involved with starting the first fashion week in Delhi with Lakme, I just thought that um, it was time to put it into perspective because uh, each time I go and give a talk uh, to students at fashion institutes, they would ask me how did you begin, where did you begin and you know, how, the entire process. And I thought, um, I spoke to my agent and she said that it was a remarkable journey and that I should write about it. It's a different kind of journey writing fiction because non-fiction books have an externality to them. There's a lot of research which is about an objective situation and a thesis which is about facts out there in the open public realm. Writing fiction is a much more an interior journey. Writing comes easy to me at one level, but it doesn't because you have to revise and revise and revise and that can be, you know, that can be, I mean, it's interesting, exciting, but it's also very exacting and demanding work. You know, we have this obsession with writing novels and every middle class Indian who's been to an English medium school now writes at least one novel. Um, you know, and it can get kind of, and most of these novels are unreadable. So I, I, I just feel that, um, um, you know, if I see Raintree uh, doing some quality non-fiction and I think that's an area that has not been, um, you know, Indians have not really taken to non-fiction. There's a place for short story collections and as an art form, I fear it is much uh, underestimated uh, compared to the novel. Because of that reading habit, I could infuse my own casual style into the book. It reads very easily. I just wrote the book very sweetly and nicely so that the reader would enjoy the journey that I went. A book is not worth the paper it's written on if it's not read. 
And so obviously one of the things an author wants is that his book, in any genre fiction or non-fiction, is read by the widest number of people possible so that what he has to say has a wider circulation and in that sense publishers naturally become very important. I think it's, it's, it's brilliant because it kind of um, brings together the finest, uh, most experienced editors in the country. That distribution is very crucial because I mean we can write books and publishers can publish them but unless those books reach the reader um, uh, it's all a bit of a waste. I strongly believe that alongside the mass market uh, literature and commercial fiction, there is an untapped vast potential for quality books which come out of a result of a lot of hard work and research. To that end, I think um, Rain Tree is fulfilling a very vital gap in literary scene in India by focusing on premium and quality, bringing out just few books every year under this imprint but each of them focusing on quality of production and content, thereby bringing out books which probably this country would be proud of. When you first write a book, the excitement is in the fact that it is your book. You want to see it in the shops, you want to see the title, you want to see your name on it. That is delight enough. But after some time, you realize that a book is not just what you have written. There's more to it. So it has to look good on the, in the bookshelves, it has to attract readers and it, when your reader opens it there should be no errors. So you want a book which is well produced and well edited as well as your own writing. But after some time, I think in, in time, what happens is that you start realizing that you also want your book to be in very good company, which means the company of books which you respect. And for this, I think one needs to have a publisher one has a good regard for. Writers are growing because the publishers are there uh, to take them and encourage them. You have uh, uh, new names coming up, you have new imprints like uh, Raintree coming up.